I was talking with Daytona lately because it's just a Kickstarter. Uh, it's since four days, and it's really it, it it's working really well. Actually, we are at sixty sixty percent now, and it's in in three four days. It's really it's really great. But there is always this feeling of uh, it will not uh, it will not work, and uh, we will have to refund everyone. And and I was telling to him that no no it's four days it's okay uh, we have uh, we have 30 day more and uh, i'm sure it will be it, it will be good you're listening to art heroes podcast the show to help you thrive as a digital artist tune in to learn how to transform your passion into a career get inspired by other kick-ass 2d and 3d artists and find out what it takes to be an art hero Hello, hello everyone. I'm Maria JD. I'm your host at Art Heroes Podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in because you are the reason we're making this show on a weekly basis. Just to remind you, if you're here for the first time, Art Heroes Podcast is a show for digital artists. And our goal is to help you guys move your career further and further and showcase different opportunities and applications of your talents in the world of digital art. And every week we're meeting amazing digital artists. And today it's Mikhail Lelievre, who's a French character modeler living and working in Montreal, Canada. Mikhail is pretty amazing. Seriously, he's been in the industry since 2011. And many people know him from his Pokemon collection because he's been working on a bunch of Pokemons and that's all what you can see on his Instagram account. Well, maybe not only, but, you know, it's a significant portion there. Uh, but uh, Mikhail also has a very interesting experience of crowdfunding one of his projects. And that was actually a 3D print project. And we're going to talk a lot about this today. So we're going to find out what it actually takes to crowdfund your project if it even worth it or not, and what are the first steps that you could take as an artist. So let's dive into it. Hello, guys. Welcome, everyone, and welcome, Mikael Lelievre. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Hi. Hi, Maya. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no, the pleasure is all ours, and uh, um, I'm really excited about the the whole theme for today. I already told Mikael what specifically seems very interesting to us and hopefully to you guys, and uh, yeah. But before we go, um, Miguel, let's talk about you. What exactly do you do now and uh, where are you based? I know you're a French artist, but uh, yeah. you're in northern France. There's like so many hours of time difference in between us. So yeah, yeah. it's it's not an exotic place, but uh, for, for a French guy, it's not so exotic. But yeah, I'm in Montreal now. I'm working for a brand uh, named Pure Arts. I'm working in Collectible. Uh, I'm I'm in Canada since 10 months, 11 months now, and it's quite good actually. Uh, yesterday we had like 50 centimeters of uh, snow, so oh nice, <laughs> that's nice. crazy. And, that's 15 and now, centimeters more than I have. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually it's minus 20 now, so yeah. Oh, amazing! Quite good here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy. I'm distracting you from you know the amazing weather outside. <laughs> yeah, I can I can stay inside now. No, so yeah, 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 that's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's good thing. I have all my time. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, cool. So collectibles, but uh, you know I know that. Uh, uh, for uh, some people that know you, I mean, some like uh, random 25, 30,000 Instagram followers among yeah. them uh, no, no. mostly know you because of your uh, Pokemon collection and yeah. uh, cute monsters that you also design. Is it just like your spare time thing? Yeah, only spare time, only personal uh, artworks. It was. Uh, I think when when I start working, I always do uh, personal stuff when I have time. I mean, it could be at lunch or uh, in the evening. So yeah, everything you see is like something comes through my head and I need to to sculpt it. Or if I have I haven't time, I just write it or uh, make a little sketch to think about doing it. And actually now when I 
when I, I'm still working, uh, you know, uh, in pure art. So uh, sometimes I have a, a tiny project, a medium project and a huge project. The tiny one can be really quick. The medium one can be a little more longer and the huge one, basically it's robots and it takes a lot of time because you have insert meshes and sometimes it works, so, but you have to change it. So I, I always rolling on three, three projects, but personal, yeah, only for me. Right. And it's really, really important for me to make just my personal project every so time. How, how long does it normally take you to finish one Pokemon? Let's call them Pokemon. Uh, for a Pokemon, it, it depends because uh, sometimes it's like, I, I mean, sometimes it can be really quick because I have the, I have the design uh, in my head. So it could take maybe two days uh, and maybe one day more to make the, the render. But actually, if I want to be really really tell the truth i could say uh, there is one that i'm still working on it. it it's like one year and i still don't know how to change it but uh but most of the time yeah it's like uh two days to one week it depends because sometimes if i have something like a blastoise or charizard or the huge ones uh, I take time because it's actually really huge. So you, if you have to scale studio or uh, or detail or uh, close or a thing like that, spikes, it does. It, it takes time because there is a lot of those on the on the design itself. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, that's it. So it can it can be different. Yeah, and yeah. so what was like? What's the story of the whole Pokemon collection? You know, for people that love love your Pokemons. Uh, me included as a person yeah. of probably the same generation. Um, yeah. yeah. So what's the, how did it, how did it start? You were like huge Pokemon boy or? <laughs> I was, a, I was a Pokemon. I, I have, I have the, um, the, uh, the green one. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite a fan, but I, I stop after the, the gold one because I have to, to, to learn uh, other stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, I always uh, appreciate Pokemon. And um, basically I started making Pokemon because uh, um, I have um, uh, something I did before Pokemon. It was the TMNT. I don't know if you saw the artwork, but yeah, uh, the, there is a story uh, on the TMNT if you want, if you want me to. Sure, to yes, about. sure, go ahead. Like, that's, so, that's what I was so asking. Yeah. The, um, the TMNT was something I started uh, way before Pokemon, and I started by doing Leonardo. And the idea I have in mind was, um, let's make the TMNT, but in a water type uh, uh, tur uh, tur turtle, because the, the TMNT is like always the same design, but with just changing the color. It, even if it's not true because the first TMNT was all red. But uh, after all, I was like, okay, I, I'm gonna try it. And I did Leonardo a long time ago. And I finished by making just a sea turtle. And uh, it, wa it was good enough to post it. So I posted it, but uh, there wasn't too much luck on it. And I was like waiting for someone telling me that it's cool and continue. But I just quit it and abandoned and just didn't continue. Okay. And one year later, I was like, oh, come on, what could I do? And I was like, yeah, I need to make the, the end of the, the TMNT. I, make to, I have to make the three other one. And I just changes, changed the species on each, uh, on each uh, character. So Leonardo is a sea turtle. Uh, Michelangelo is a California turtle. Um, Donatello is the Mata Mata from Madagascar and uh, Raphael obviously is the snapping turtle obviously. so the, the, the yes. badass one and from there I had a lot of people like saying it was crazy and that was good and uh, obviously it was one year later and I, I just saw that I, I, I had a lot of more experience in ZBrush and I was more able to make uh, more design uh, around it and after the TMNT, I was like, what could I do uh, with my redesign? What could I do more than the, the TMNT? And in my head, it was like, I'm a fan of TMNT and Pokemon. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, I need to make the Pokemon. And I was like, I have, I have a lot of Pokemon to do. So I'm, I'm okay for a long time. So that's <laughs> how I started to make Pokemon redesign. Yes. With Pokemon, you can be busy forever. Like, seriously. Oh, yeah there's definitely the universe is close to close to yeah unlimited yeah yeah i think i can work till my 
till my death yeah. actually i think <laughs> oh my God. i'm not sure if that sounds good or bad but yeah no. anyways like uh, uh, you definitely found a great topic um mm -hmm. cool so uh, that's uh, that's nice story so you're still working on pokemons like now uh actually just now um i uh i just posted the last one it was pins here so uh, i were uh, i just released it uh this afternoon yeah this morning this morning so um, i just stopped it for a moment because as you said it's more like uh when you go somewhere you are the pokemon guy making pokemon so I was like, um, I like it, but uh, I'm not just doing it. But so, so I need people. I need people to see that I'm able to do it. So that that's good. But I need to show that I, I do other stuff than Pokemon. <laughs> and it, obviously, for freelance, is good too because you have to show that you can make something else than Pokemon. And actually, for my wife and my mother, I do something cute sometimes because they prefer to see something cute sometimes. So that's okay. why if you go on my art station, sometimes you will have creature, creature, nightmare, cute thing, creature, creature, <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> So okay. I do a licorn or a unicorn or something oh like that. Oh my God, just this to, is so cute of happy. you. Like, yeah. I love this uh, diversification <laughs> strategy. Yeah, and actually it's really good for, uh, I mean, uh, artistic mental health. Because yeah. when you take some, some uh, step back, try something more cute, and it's really easier to make something cartoony. When you come back to something really noisy with a lot of, uh, you know, detail, it's like you, you, you are happy to go back on detail and you are happy to go back on something really more simple. So you, you think and you skill differently. And you can add a mecha or a robot to it, so you can really change how you skilled and how you use ZBrush. So definitely, definitely. So now that we know a little bit of your story, and thank you very much uh, for saying that you're not only Pokemon guy. Really appreciate that, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, so um, I wanted to uh, ask you a little bit about the the other project that really grabbed my attention. And that's, uh, you know, I think could be really interesting for many people on the other side of the screen to learn from is uh, your experience with uh, crowdfunding. Just, yeah. uh, um, can you quickly, well, it doesn't have to be quickly, but uh, tell us a little bit, what was that like? What was the project and how did it go? And what was the whole like campaign about? What exactly did you crowdfund? Yeah, yeah. So. The, and we'll, the, I'll make sure that I put a show link, uh, sorry, note uh, in uh, the show notes uh, with the uh, link to the project so that people that are listening to this now uh, in a podcast format can uh, uh, can check it out. And if it's, mm -hmm. you guys are watching the YouTube video, then there's a link in the, in the video description. So make sure that it's there so that it's more visual. All right, let's go into the story. So... The story started with the, the same story before. It was with the TMNT, actually. So I don't know if uh, everyone know um, the, the name of Ayastoy, but this is a couple, a couple working in uh, New Zealand. They do their own stuff and they, they create their, their own figurine. And um, one day they asked to make a partnership with uh, an artist. Actually, it was the second time they, they were doing it. and. Um, I just post my portfolio and post my, what I would like to, to make with them. And I post the TMNT. So once I posted the TMNT, uh, it was maybe two weeks after or maybe one week after. Um, uh, John Troy Nichol just uh, wrote uh, to me and uh, asked me if I was okay to create the TMNT with them. And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, that's what I want. And, uh, Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sign me up and just le let me know how, uh, what, where do I sing, uh, what do I have to do. And uh, back then, I wasn't sure if my turtle would be printable because it was actually still uh, new, the 3D printing and uh, all, all those uh, new exciting things with the Form 1, Form 2. I, I, don't, I don't remember the Form 2 was already there, but uh, yeah. What year um, was that? Uh, oh, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I think it was... I think it was not that long ago. Come no, on. No, it was not that long. It was maybe 2016. Yeah. 17, 16. Well, anyways. That yeah, was that something like ago. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was the form too. But yeah, for old anyway, people like us, it's very not long ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Actually, they work with own age. I don't know. I think a lot of people know own age now because... Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. for uh, for... Uh, 
a lot of famous 3D artists. I'll and, put the link uh, in the show notes only just well yeah. <laughs> for everybody who's not familiar. All right. And so Aya Story is really, it's a really great uh, partnership because they ask, they ask the artist to just split 50-50. So that's really cool because they do all the, the stuff that I'm doing now in my company, but I, back then I didn't know how to make it. So they prepare it for 3D printing and they prepare it for the, to cut the parts. And actually the TMNT was quite difficult to cut, but uh, they did it and they produce it after we managed to have uh, 18 uh, client, 18 founder bike baker. So we had one month to make it possible. And um, I asked how it told me to make some publicity on my website and, and on um, Instagram. Back then I, I have maybe a little less followers and a little less person following me. Uh, but I was like, it's possible there is more than enough person to bury it. And actually it's false, it's not true. <laughs> you have a lot of followers, but all the followers don't want to pay it. And, I, and I'm not like, uh, they have to pay it. I mean, even me, I wasn't sure if I, if I would like to, to have those four turtles in, in my home. And, uh, and that's something you, you need to think before starting a crowdfunding or a Kickstarter. So at the end, we managed to have 18. But to be honest, so 18, there is 18, uh, 18 uh, uh, backers. 18 backers, a little more than that because I am one baker with uh, four statue. So okay. I, I cheated. <laughs> so eventually you decided that yes, yes, you do need, and not even one, but actually four, so that one yeah. doesn't heal only. There is one for me, one for my mother, one for my brother, and another one for my other brother. But I needed to do it. And actually my my big brother do, do split it and because this is a... Um, you know, this is a diorama, so you can put it everywhere in your house or you can just put the force together. And maybe it was the thing that wasn't so smart about uh, making a diorama because we just sell the diorama. So you need to, to, to buy everything. So this is a, a lot of money in one, in, uh, in one, uh, in one time. And how, I do you remember how much that was? Two, $250, I think. And I think... It's not so so expensive now. I know how we how we do to make a 3D print and uh, to cut it and uh, the work we we done before doing that. But I mean, it could be really less expensive if we if we have done one by one without doing this big bunch of uh, of 3D. I would like to show you the the um, the turtle, but I can't because they they are in France actually, okay. so I don't have it. But, okay. Uh, so, but eventually, um, you did it. You crowd financed it, it, like crowdsourced it. I, and I cheated a little, but yeah, yeah. Fine, <laughs> like yeah, this is fine. Actually, you know, it it reminds me a little bit of my first one of my first student jobs. You know, like uh, um, I was doing uh, um, fundraising for Greenpeace. Yeah. And you know, some of these annoying people that stop you on the street and yeah, talk yeah. to you about <laughs> about saving the world. So I was yeah. one of these people. And the trick was that if you don't um, sign a certain number of people a week, you lose the job. No, so I no signed way. myself. I signed myself and my mother, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when you want to, to, to sell of cookies. Course. So <laughs> I totally you know. understand when you sign yourself for something that you care about. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I think this is this this level of cheating is fine, especially if you like your work. Yeah. And at um, the end, it was more about yeah, it more about to have the the other client happy because they would receive the what they are paying for. And um, I didn't tell it, but neither Ayastoy and me made money about it with it. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I'm quite happy with it because I'm just. I know that somewhere in the world there is someone on a, with his desk and there is the, the turtle on it. And I, I think this is the, the best reward because after all, making money is important. But after all, having your, a piece of you, of your mind, because at the, at the beginning it's just in your mind. And at the end, it could be on the desk somewhere in, a, in Australia or in, a, in India. or I, I don't know, but uh, that's, that's the thing uh, that makes me dream of uh, making uh, toys and making you know you, you 
what you're creating and possibly uh, seeing it on a, on a desk uh, somewhere yeah. in the world. Definitely, 100%. And thanks for saying that. I think it's definitely not only all about like cashing out and every, every job. So it, was, uh, so it was kind of a neutral for you. I mean, it's not that you became rich from 3D printing this one thing. Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, not rich at all, but uh, not rich with money, but uh, happy with, uh, rich with, uh, with the fact that... Uh, yeah. With the, the the little turtle are traveling, yeah. But uh, this was a great experience to see uh, actually how how it works to make something printable, uh, and uh, how we do to have something uh, crowdfunding, mm -hmm. crowdfunded, and uh, and that you can see that it's quite difficult to to make it uh, possible. So explain me a little bit more in detail. What was the whole process like? What platform did you use, and what kind of preparation? did it take because i'm sure that many people are interested in crowdfunding their yeah. projects and uh, sounds like uh, crowdfunding is now becoming very uh, very popular there are so many ways you can do that so mm -hmm. how easy is that to use the platform and to get your stuff crowdfunded you still you know got uh people that supported you yeah yeah, yeah. so in my way, when I did this this project uh, alone, I just used a lot of uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, all the social media. And this was not a crowdfunding with a Kickstarter or any um, any uh, crowdfunding, crowdfunding platform. It was more about Ayastoy making his social media and me making making work my social media to to make publicity to make uh, the first picture of the of the tmnt because at the beginning you don't have the prototype so you have to make a believable render in a key shot or in a v-ray like if it's like a real figure and with that you can talk about the size but the people need to see the size so you you try to 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 make another render with a, a scale uh, around it and at the end, I think the, the things working the, the best was Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was the best, the best way to make it. And uh, now when I just uh, have a, when I know how it works now, I would say it was really risky after, the, after all to make it uh, by myself. And uh, I asked even if they have a lot of people following them, it's really risky. But uh, eventually after, uh, after, uh, one month we make we made one month to have 18 uh comments so i think it's more about uh being patient mm -hmm. because it can, it can it can be really stressful actually at work we are making a kickstarter now uh for a uh, for an artist named daytoner and i see the difference between me alone in my social media and now in my uh, in my actual work i see the communication team making the kickstarter preparing it uh preparing months before and it was like uh, changing the pictures uh, making you know uh, um, uh, real photography interesting photography prototype i mean we are working i'm working in a collectible uh, thing so they can make prototype like uh, like this and with a painted version another painted version and it's like crazy and really efficient and you can see the difference and that a big company can make for a, a little artist. And this is the, I think now it's really hard to, to sell by, uh, by ourselves because the thing is you have to put a lot of money to create all the, all this stuff, the communication, the prototype, the future, uh, um, shipment. You, you need to think, uh, to think about a lot of things. And I, it, you can you can get crazy as an artist because all we like to do as a sculptor it's like you sculpt you finish it even you know just print it just print it it's okay but after that you you're like ah that's really crazy i can i can do more than that because it's like when you have a freelance work and you have to read the contract and you have to to think about how you you're gonna do if they don't pay you uh, it's like that i don't know as an yeah. artist it's it's crazy but Eventually now, as I'm doing, as I'm, when I do a personal work, I, I always post in uh, Facebook, group Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, ArtStation, 
and uh, I do that every time. So now I'm I'm used to it, and I always post it like this. So I don't know. Maybe sometimes I will do another crowdfunding, and uh, I will try it again. Or maybe I will try to learn myself how to make uh, my own cast and my own mold. Okay. Uh, and actually, I'm learning it uh, right cool. now. Yeah. So before, actually, I'll take a note so that I don't forget uh, about the cast and mold. Uh, but just yeah. to finish a little bit on uh, the um, on the crowdfunding thing. So uh, now uh, you're you as a team with your company are working on the crowdfunding campaign. So yeah. on a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's the do you know what's the goal of the campaign? What are you uh, what are you backing? So we are backing, uh, this what is an art toy, backing, actually. Yeah. This is, a, you have a two choice. You have a resin uh, figure, a really huge one. This is, uh, the name of the figure is uh, Master 99. It was done by uh, Daytoner. Daytoner is an artist I presented to my boss when I started in, uh, in Pure Arts. And time before, um, I mean, Pure Arts is not really so, uh, so new because they, uh, they do a lot of stuff. They do a, a lot of figure uh, in China for a sideshow for a lot of uh, a lot of uh, brands. So uh, I come back to to Daytoner. So um, Daytoner uh, did lately a really great uh, sculpt. It was he do a lot of great sculpt actually. So but the the last one was like Master Nine Nine uh, Nine Eyes, and we. When uh, my boss saw it, he wanted to to try a Kickstarter and to to work with uh, with Daytoner. Actually, his real name is Daniel, so he, he wanted to work with Daniel. And uh, it started months ago, and they talked together. We st he started to saying to him that uh, we are working on it. So he sent the 3D file. We uh, actually my uh, my colleague just uh, make the correction, put the key, and uh, we did the first prototype. He saw it and. It's really more and more efficient with it because actually we saw the prototype like uh, weeks after it was ready, picture were were ready, photo were ready. That's that's really really efficient to have like a huge machine like Pure Arts or like a like I don't know a, a big brand just to help. I I want to say tiny artists, but we are not tiny, but we are alone, alone artists, and uh, we need that to. Well, you can to, say independent yeah. artists independent artist yeah but you feel tiny i mean when you when you want to to go in this world man no now now i saw how it work and how it work even with the with the brand like uh, i don't know bandai or or uh, pokemon company or uh, disney or something like that you're like that's crazy there is a, a lot of a uh, lot of thing to do a lot of back and forth a lot of and when you think that you are alone and you have to to do to do it and when you know what is all the process, you're like uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't even try to make it. Yeah, but it's possible if you if you have a little uh, help from a big company, it's it's way way better. Way, so uh, do do you think it's uh, uh, it's possible for an independent artist get support of uh, a bigger uh, of a bigger studio to actually, for example, like in this case with Day Turner, to run a campaign, or it's purely um, or it's purely random that this collaboration happened. Uh, I think it's a little of both. I think if you have your style, your own style, and you continue practicing your own style, and you have really your uh, your way of create, creating your things, I think you can do it all your life and never uh, never do anything. Because um, I mean, today we are doing this with Daytoner, but it takes a lot a lot of time, and we we need to make it. Uh, um, in a in a lot of time, but we we can do many artists at the same time. So it's really something random. If you have someone uh, who is waiting, there is another one. And as an example, I could talk about uh, the one I have beside me. Yes, this is, sure. Uh huh. This the one is, with the red sign with the red sun behind. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a work done by uh, Pascal Blanchet. And uh, actually, this is. Uh, this is one of the stuff we help uh, House of Gog to do. Pure Arts help House of Gog to, to create this statue for Pascal Blanchy. And this is another way of doing it. Uh, House of Gog is uh, 
is this is the first project of House of Gog actually, but they are working to make uh, an independent artist as such as uh, Pascal Blanchet. And Pascal Blanchet have his really own style and he really his own way of creating things. I mean, when you see it, you know that it's Pascal Blanchet. And this is another way to create a, a new form of art. So you don't, so when I think about House of Gogs, they just saw the concept and from the concept say that we can make the, so one four scale statue. I don't have it because it's quite expensive actually, but I would like to have one uh, <laughs> at least at one moment. But uh, that's, I saw, I saw it every day in, uh, I see it every day at work and it's, it's like crazy. And you're like, that's something different. I mean, I, I mean, I like a lot of Marvel statue. I like a lot of, uh, you know, really famous bronze statue, but this is ref refreshing. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, refreshing. To, to see uh, it looks beautiful know. I have to say I mean I'll, I'll post the link in the show notes but I think you know on the full screen and, uh, uh, and more so in real life I'm sure it looks uh, amazing it's crazy it's really crazy and uh, you can actually saw it yeah, yeah, on the uh, House of Gog uh, website I think mm -hmm. but this one was it also crowdfunded or no that was no. Uh, that was a different model right yeah yeah it's more like um I don't know how to say it, but uh, it's like uh, each, as it's really the beginning of it, it chose uh, multiple artists that he like. And I think he, he finished by choosing Pascal Blanchet because he's a fan and mm -hmm. he wanted to create this for, uh, for Pascal and uh, he started it. But I mean, it's really difficult to start something, a company with, uh, with just the idea and wanting to create the best stuff. So that's why he asked, he asked her to, he asked to pure arts to to help him because pure arts uh, can really it's really as i said a big machine and you can really do really really fine art with it and uh, this is a piece of art when you see it this is this is really a piece of art from the mind of pascal blanchet to the the final statue you can you can see it and uh, yeah it's not crowdfunding but all the work of of crowdfunding is uh, is more is more like a bet. He bet on the fact that he would be able to sell uh, those statue, and he, he managed to make it. So, and he is crowdfunding now by selling those. He make pre-orders. He don't use Kickstarter, but at the end, it's working too. But this is a lot of work because he, as pure arts and as out of God, they go to, you know, to New York to Comic Con, to uh, to San Diego, to. Uh, uh, lately, it was Toy Fair. Uh, they, they go everywhere just to show the the statue, and that the people could really un see it for real and uh, understand that it's not cheap. But that's why, because the, this is really a, a piece of art, and this is a step between uh, collectible and fine art. I think this is the a step between the something you can see in a museum. And something you can see in a shop. Wow! I don't know. I don't know this if you. This is so interesting. No, absolutely. I totally get that. Totally get that. This is really interesting. And you, you know, the more we talk, the more I see actually how much work there is behind uh, oh, yeah, the whole process of uh, actually making people buy your stuff when when you are an artist behind it, whether you're a concept artist or. 3D artist, sculptor, modeler. It's just incredible. It's just so hard. And very stressful, I think, because I was talking with Daytona lately because it's just a Kickstarter. Uh, it's since four days. And it's really, it, it, it's working really well, actually. We are at 60, 60% now. And it's in, in three, four days, it's really, it's really great. But there is always this feeling of, uh, it will not. Uh, it will not work, and uh, we will have to refund everyone. And and I was telling to him, oh, no, no, it's four days. It's okay. Uh, we have uh, we have thirty day more, and uh, I'm sure it will be it, it will be good, and it will be okay. But you know, I I can't have this feeling because I had it with the TMNT, and I was like, no, no, there is no way we can. I don't want to to stop now. I want I want to have those uh, produced and uh, and in the real world because actually. As we are a digital sculptor, everything is in folders, in windows, in a, in those thing, and you, in your mind, and it's it's never outside. But once you have it outside, actually, I have one here. I have multiple ones, but this, is this yours? 
Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yes, I know it. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. This is the pig girl. <laughs> yes. But this is so to, cute. Yeah. Yes, uh, so just, for well, everyone, is, yeah, for everyone who's watching, this is a video. Great. If you guys are listening again, there will be a show note link. There's a little all here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all pig. I don't know. It's just a, a real piggle. piggle, amazing creature. Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, this was just something in my mind. So just very, very, a, to a me, that's a great the, example of your style, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, okay. Basically, let me go back a little bit to, we've, we've, I guess we've covered a lot of ground with uh, uh, crowdfunding and Kickstarter and alternatives. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned just before that there is another way uh, of doing this and you mentioned casting and modeling something that you're learning now yeah so, uh, uh, yeah can you explain more about that uh so there is something i like to do uh uh sometimes i do as i said cartoonish uh creature and i like to stay simple and uh, like for the like for the piggle I, i'm trying just to put the right uh, edge at the right place and it's kind of uh not so far from uh, art toys but uh, I'm trying to be just in between art toys and just my uh, cartoonish style. And lately, I just about uh, this is the something about lately. This is from um, from an uh, independent artist. Mm -hmm. I, this is a rookie. There is a uh, cute little orange toy. Yeah, yeah. I guess also 3D printed. Yes. And it was 3D printed and he do his own stuff. Uh, he do his own mold and uh, I asked him uh, to help me and to, how to make it. And uh, because I saw a lot of, you know, video and uh, about casting and I was like, no, I can't do that at all. It's, it's chemical, it's difficult. But actually he showed me just a, a, um, a, channel, a YouTube channel named Smooth On. It's like, it's like there is just simple video showing you how to make a mold and uh, what you have to use. And just for starting, you just make a mold in one piece. So I'm trying to create something in one piece in a ZBrush. I'm gonna print it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my first mold. Uh, I think next month I would be ready to do it. But I look, all the I look at the, all the tutorial to make it. And eventually if I'm comfortable with it, I will try to make something more complicate you can make in two parts uh, i can do what i do at at my work it's uh, you know i can cut parts and uh, just mold all together this is in my mind now because i you know it's like i'm gonna do it and it's, it's gonna work but uh, not yeah. sure about it but I, I need to try your first one and uh, I, I will try to make like resin cookie did for this uh, bomba <laughs> yeah and i would like to make it uh, yeah. Cool. Like so, can we put the? Uh, can you give me later on the link to the learning resource that you mentioned? Because I think if people want to, uh, yeah. would see the details. Yeah, that will be. I will give you that. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah, okay. Course. Cool. Cool. That's a that's a great tip. Mm, so, uh, basically, is that something that you're looking to at uh, doing this year? Like yeah, I think I, I will try this year. Yeah, yeah. The the first part is to. Um, is to learn how to make it in uh, in resin actually, and once I will be comfortable with it, I will go further and uh, learn how to make it in ceramic or in something more noble. Like uh, I don't know if you know, I think you know the artist Zilongzhu. Yep. And this guy is really incredible because he he created 3D, and sometimes yeah. after you can see it in ceramic, and it's it's like it's it's the the best jump it's like i told uh, i told early, earlier it's like you could you could see something in a shop and something in a museum and basically zilongzhu is doing something like you could see in a museum because i think the this is about the matter you're using the material and uh, ceramic and uh, all those stuff like uh, going back to something more artisanal you know it's I don't know. It's really what what we have in mind at the beginning. It's really what we want to to do. I think. I I, I mean, it's cool to see it in resin and to see it in plastic. But once you have something like really EV and uh, with a yes, a noble material, it's 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 quite different. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You, you don't have the same sensation. So next step would be this. But uh, I think. Uh, 
I'm dreaming, but uh, I need, uh, I need to, <laughs> to, to learn a lot. There is a, that, not that much of a difference in between, you know, putting goals and dreaming. So yeah. you never know. You never know. Yeah, and so do you think you will ever try uh, crowdfunding your projects ever again? Like knowing that you know, knowing how long it takes? I would do it differently because uh, I, I follow a lot of people like Crazy Rookie who did the Bomba and um, the best way to do and to start uh, making your own stuff, it's uh, don't be too, uh, it's the thing to, to do is don't do like hundreds of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of your uh, project. You need to make something like 10 or maybe 20. And once you have uh, 20 of those, just make pre-orders or on Instagram and do the shipment yourself. And at the end, you will not, um, you will not have a lot of money, but at, at least you will, we, you will have a few money and you will be able to just uh, distrib distribute to, to yeah. ship uh, all, the, all those, uh, all of your creation in the world. Maybe it could be just uh, your uh, your neighbor, but sometimes you can you can send it at the the other side of the of the planet. And I think this is the feeling you need to have uh, when you create something. So, yes, yeah. my my advice would would be just create ten more than hundred, and it will be more easier. And even if people would would will say that oh no, I would I would like to have one, but it's too late it's too late it's too late but you can do another one after and and it would be okay with yeah, that cool i think that's a great tip so basically in this case uh, you wouldn't advise using the platform because it's kind of a too complicated and you can yeah. just still and you will uh, you would lose money and uh, it, it would be and at the end the kickstarter is like uh, you need to really prepare it i mean you can do the you know it's like you see the early bird the other thing you you have and sometimes it's like so if you buy one, you have a sticker. If you buy two, you have a sticker and a K ring. If you buy three, you have this and this and this. I mean, you're, alone, complicating your stuff. you're trying to make your own stuff uh, and you're trying to make it good. So just just make 10. Just take yeah. time to sell it. And uh, when someone is asking, just prepare it and, and send it. Send it and this, this is okay. I mean, just... And Just I mean, start small, and uh, if maybe later to try to try a Kickstarter. Like uh, I don't know, I, I know Dominic Quick makes some Kickstarter now because he knows that there is a bakers for for his stuff, and I would be one uh, one of those. But uh, <laughs> that's the, I mean I mean just yeah try to try to make little at the beginning, and uh, once you 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 know that you will have people. Uh, to back you just try to kickstarter but uh, right but uh, uh if i'm if i'm understanding you right in the very beginning if it's your first experience with with crowdfunding specifically don't expect to be um to, to kind of make a lot of money on that because mm -hmm. that's uh, from what i'm from what i'm hearing that's kind of not the point with your first experience yeah yeah don't don't expect to have money but expect just to ju just be just being happy to share the, that's all and after that yeah if you really want to make money i think i think that's pretty hard and the best way would be that that's why the the best way would be to work with a, a big company and as i say i we as we talk about it it's yeah it's kind of difficult because even a big company can handle uh, one by one so it just uh, it's just not possible to make take everyone i mean you just open our station and you want to produce everything in the in the first page because there is so so much crazy thing now so i think yeah being patient if you are alone and uh, there is no company asking you to make something just do it like you like i would say to a junior to to start his portfolio uh by putting something on it and just step by step come into something more accurate more interesting for other company but i mean this is not a race. This is a walk. So Definitely. take your time. And, uh, 100%. Yeah, that's it. And I think this is the same for a lot of things, even uh, even for music. Even I, I mean, I, I don't play anything, but I know my, my wife is playing guitar. And uh, 10 years ago, she played like good. And now she played really, really well. So everything is like this. Just start little and just progress year after year. And that's all. That is super inspiring. Definitely, definitely a great tip. And uh, especially, I think, in this industry, um, mm -hmm. can't learn everything in an instance. Definitely have to keep improving all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.
Wow. Well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty surprised how far this conversation went. I definitely <laughs> didn't expect to, you know, to dig pretty deep on the, in this I topic. so much to say. No, <laughs> like, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I yes. actually, I just uh, really wanted now to jump in our traditional questionnaire that, uh, ah, yeah. that is the, <laughs> the exercise that we do with every single poor person that appears in this podcast. So yeah. uh, what are you going to say? Ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's do it. So uh, you remember the rules are simple. Just a few questions. There are 10 and uh, you've got to reply in a few words. Okay. Yeah, a few words. One okay. sentence maximum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's your favorite place in the world? Uh, actually, it's multiple places. It's a, a greenhouse. Greenhouse? In a, in a garden. Yeah. I, I, I like the feeling to be in a greenhouse. You um, do you garden? Yeah, a lot. I know you do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot. But this okay, is a then, good feeling. Yeah. yeah, there is a bonus question then. What's your favorite plant? My favorite plant? Uh, this is... Uh, uh, actually, there is multiple ones. There is a name. This is the uh, L'Arbre de Jade. Okay. What is so it like? If you, it's like uh, it's a grass plant. plant uh, how to say, I, I don't know how to say it in English. So well, You can say this it's grass. It's pretty understandable. Plant grass. This is a plant grass. So this is, a, you know, like uh, it making a trunk. But uh -huh. it's like a tiny baobab. Oh, okay. You yeah, see? So this you managed is really, to say that. Yeah, Perfect yeah. explanation. <laughs> Jeez. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Bonus question answered. Let's move yeah. on. So cool. while, while you're working, what are you listening to? Uh, it depends on what I'm sculpting, but uh, when it's something cute, it's more like hip hop classic. When it's something like the last thing I did, like something more, uh, more uh, creature creepy, it's heavy metal and uh, metal and uh, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not surprised. Okay, <laughs> what's your favorite way to gain inspiration? Uh, Mother Nature. Okay, really? it's like a, a greenhouse. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, actually, it's kind of the same way. It can be a, just uh, something, I, a documentary or something I saw in a park. Or, uh, yeah, I think there is plenty of stuff to see, to, to, yeah, to watch and to, to get inspired from just modern nature. It can be a creature, can be a plant, can be a fungus, can be anything, I think. Cool. I so what's your favorite, what's your big life goal? Staying happy. Nice. And what's your favorite drink? Beer. Um, Don't need to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Beer. No. I mean, even if I would say no, I would take a beer after that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Some> beer. <laughs> even if you've been drinking water all this time in the podcast, it's yeah, still this, beer. <laughs> this is water. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> okay. So, what is the first thing that you do in the morning? Uh, shower. I would right. not uh, be able to make anything if I don't take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, like, <laughs> yep. Easy. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Right after the. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your backup career? Uh, actually, there would be two. It would be woodworker or a gardener. Oh, okay. Very different careers. Yeah, yeah. So. Very different from each other. <laughs> I, it can be, yeah, it could be complementary, but yeah. Okay. So one day when you're done with uh, all the sculpting, uh, we'll see you in the woods somewhere. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah actually, okay. yeah. Really if the, if know. there is a, a, a black, uh, black internet, no, no, no internet or something like that, yeah, I would learn to sculpt in the wood. Amazing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I have already the, the shirt to, to make it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine that uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you're thinking of this. That was a pretty confident answer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can you recommend any book or movie? Uh, the last great movie I saw, I watched, was uh, Green Book, actually. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, yeah. It was, so good. I mean, lately there is, a, there is a lot of really great movie uh, when I when we talk about VFX, but when, when it's about real movie, I mean, uh, with a real scenario, the last one was, uh, yeah, Green Book is, is, is amazing. I, I think yeah. the story is good and the, the actor yeah, are just Definitely. Awesome, yeah. I love the story and uh, just like yeah. the twist that it takes. It's very human. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, yeah. human. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who are some of your legends? You mentioned, I know, during the podcast, but maybe... Yeah. 
so I, I'm going to say some, and uh, I, I'm not be able. I will not be able to say more, but uh, there is a lot of those. So I would say Furio Tedeschi first because he's the one who made me make freelance after after uh, I started 3D. I would say Junji Kim. I don't know if I say it good, but is is the is the guy who who just draw like a god, you know? Okay. He's just yeah, yeah. You you will see Junji Kim is just incredible. Just taking Juan a Ho note for myself, yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> there is a uh, Juanjo Guarnido. He's the guy uh, who created the Black Sad. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Bibi and uh, Speeder Zero for the traditional sculpture. And uh, there is much more, but I will. Is I there anyone here. for like wood sculpture? Wood sculpture? Uh, I, I think. No, no, I don't. I don't have. <laughs> I don't have some. Okay, well, that's something to add. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to add this. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, okay. Yeah. Good. See. <laughs> well, like, now I gave you some homework. Okay. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. <laughs> okay, the last one. Um, do you have anything on your bucket list? Uh, actually, I, I told it. It's just creating, uh, being able to create my own ceramic or creating my uh, 3D art in ceramic or, yeah, put it in a noble material. That's that's something I would like to do in my bucket list, but there is nothing, no, uh, just maybe if it's something different from what I said before, it would uh, uh, travel more. Okay. And, yeah. I love the ceramic idea. Seriously. Yeah. I think, uh, I think there is definitely, uh, there's definitely something in it and it's just very, yeah, different. yeah, yeah. I think so. So yeah. Love the material too. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that was quick and, uh, we're actually done. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, thanks so much. That no, was really you, learning intense. I'm just, uh, you know what I'm, uh, I'm, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to distill everything and, uh, uh, I'll probably watch this recording again when, yeah, yeah. when okay. we're done, because there's just so much to digest. So yes, okay. thanks. Thanks so much for sharing. Really, yeah, really my, appreciate my pleasure, it. That was like uh, a lot of useful stuff and yes. Uh, thanks so much again for being here. And that was, uh, uh we are just out of time. So that was perfect. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And I'll see you again. All right, Mikhail. See you. Sure. Bye. Thank you guys for listening. But before you go, a little but very exciting announcement from Art Heroes team. We're actually putting together a program on 3D printing for artists. And we're really excited about launching it sometime in mid-March. The waitlist registrations, however, are already open, but it's only public for the podcast listeners. I'm leaving the link in the show notes and you can already preview what are the contents and what exactly we're going to be covering. But I'm telling you, that's going to be amazing because we're going to make so many 3D prints of so many different models. And we're going to showcase all the details on how to do it with your model of any level of complexity. So as I said, you can already join the waitlist and you're gonna be the first ones to be able to join the program as soon as it's live within a couple of weeks from now. So see you all there and see you next week on the podcast. That was Maria JD, cheers. Thanks for listening to Art Heroes Podcast. Check out www.artheroes.co for show notes, more interviews, and free tools made for you by our team of mentors. Tune in next week for more inspiration, and keep up the great work, hero!